Hi, my name is Tim Hoyer. Uh, I work at Landcare Research as a web developer and I am here to talk about OSGO. So let's get to it. To summarize, uh, I, I want to tell you what OSGO is, uh, who it is and how it's organized uh, and the relevance for Palmerston North. Uh, I want to give you an update on the recent past um, Phosphor-D conference uh, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, the new features of open layers. Landcare research and open source uh, is a topic that I'll briefly handle in this presentation just to raise awareness of the tools and so on that we created at Landcare research. Uh, and then I'm gonna introduce um, or talk about the next OSGO meeting, uh, which is not organized yet. So, what is e OSGO? Uh, open Source for Geospatial Foundation. That's um, the, the title of that organization. It's basically there to support collaborative development of open source and geospatial software. Uh, it's, it's trying to promote the widespread use of open source for GIS uh, and it aims to make maps and GIS very accessible for everyone and for free. So OSGO New Zealand, um, it's basically a combined version for Australia and New Zealand. Um, it has a mailing list of about 200 subscribers, um, but the mailing list hasn't been very active lately and we're trying to change that. So these are just some links that you can follow uh, to have a look at uh, about the um, Australian New Zealand uh, chapter. You can just find this by googling uh, OSGO and New Zealand or Australia. So what's the relevance uh, for the Palmerston North OSGO group? Uh, firstly, we want to raise awareness of open source to local people and make connections. Uh, we have presentations which are a mixture of high-level and technical content. Uh, we want to network and collaborate in the flesh, so instead of just doing it over email and and so on, we would like to actually meet up and, and have physical interaction like handshaking and so on. We want to share the knowledge that we have because there's a vast amount about um, especially GIS and open source. And of course we want to have fun. So having fun is a, a, a big component of this meeting. Just to have a laugh and maybe have a drink or something. So I'm going to give a brief update on PhosphorD and OSGU. Uh, so PhosphorD is the conference around around open source geo. Uh, there was one held this year just in September, I believe, in Portland, USA. There were 900 delegates there uh, from 40 countries. Uh, so that's quite a lot. It's, it's the biggest in its area, uh, as far as I know. The next one will be held in, in Seoul, South Korea. So what was the ma main outcomes of OSGEO um, Phosphor-G? Um, so a big topic was vector tiled maps. Apparently there are some libraries that have been introduced or uh, at least awareness has been um, raised. And then how can we use drones uh, for crowdsourcing imagery? So drones are little airplanes or helicopters that can fly around and you can uh, take photos from the top down. So instead of um, flying airplanes and doing expensive photographs, we can actually fly, fly drones that take photos of the um, environment. Uh, and then a bit of a topic was also um, printing maps uh, with reports, uh, where the Mapfish print version 3 uh, was introduced, which also does reports and so on. Uh, and the main outcome was that uh, we want to push for more educational resources uh, in form of uh, geolabs uh, for open source. 
And yeah, as I mentioned, it's Phosphor-G is the probably the biggest uh, geotech conference in the world. It's sponsored by Google and Boundless and uh, other companies. Uh, I think even es Esri is there. So now I'm going to give you some feature overview of OpenLayers 3. Uh, some of the main features or at least some features that seemed new to me or important. So open s um, Open Layers is open source. It's a client-side web map library, uh, similar to Google Maps and Bing Maps, etc. Uh, it's basically a way of displaying maps on your uh, slippy maps on your PC or phone or tablet uh, in a web browser. So some of the main features are that there are tiled layers. Um, XYZ sources like Google Maps, Bing, and other open standards. Um, there are vector layers uh, which support various vector formats. Some of the important ones are listed here like GeoJSON, TopoJSON, KML, G GML, and more. Uh, the library is growing fast uh, and it's in beta at the moment. Uh, which you can I believe used for production use already because they advertise that in the examples. Uh, the probably the the best or the newest feature of OpenLayers 3 is the new rendering engine support, uh, like WebGL, which is uh, OpenGL for the web, a subset of that, and Canvas rendering, which is basically HTML5. Uh, it's a lot faster than DOM rendering. Uh, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. It's just some technical jargon. Um, so, and you can do easily uh, styling with with just CSS. CSS is just a web technology to do styling in the browser. So, uh, one feature that you can see highlighted in this image is that you have uh, supported vector layers. So here you can see an outline of Italy uh, uh, upside down. So that shows another feature of OpenLayers 3 that you can rotate maps. Uh, OpenLayers 3 uh, supports image filtering, uh, which you can see with this example, which just shows a, a spyglass. So you, you because you have canvas rendering and WebGL rendering, out of the box you, you get um, image filtering. So here I basically show quickly uh, an example of how you can draw features. You can draw features like that and then it supports snapping uh, to the nearest um, point. Uh, you can drag new points, uh, you can drag existing points and uh, you can do a lot of things you can only do with um, a desktop GIS nowadays. Um, OpenLayers 3 supports rotating the map. So you can zoom and pan as on any map. You can rotate it. Uh, and it's very fast and high performant uh, on all sorts of devices because it's done with with uh, newer technologies for uh, faster rendering. So next I want to talk a bit about um, Landcare Research's open source involvement. In particular, um, Landcare Research has sponsored the development of a library called Care. Uh, it's named after this bird um, that is a New Zealand native bird. So what is Kia and why do we want it? Um, it's a geospatial library. Uh, why do we need it? Uh, we needed better file handling for sharing, quicker access and processing. Uh, and we needed an interface between GDAO and the HDF raster format uh, for easier and better raster processing. Um, we needed uh, an efficient access to raster data files uh, and we needed that even over the network. And uh, one of the good features of Care is that it has a complete GDAL API to, to 
HDF. Uh, so that leads me to the TUI view application. The TUI view application is also sponsored by Landcare Research. It is, it is free and open source. You can download it for free for Windows and Linux. Uh, you might be able to get it working on the Mac, uh, but it works on, on the major platforms. Uh, so you can even view files remotely. So this is an example of the TUI viewer application, uh, which I just loaded um, a raster image here, uh, which which is a Kia file, uh, and uh, you can do coloring and all sorts of stuff. I'm I'm by no means a specialist on um, on using. Uh, desktop GIS, uh, but this too was very easy for me to pick up. So I want to talk briefly about the next OSGEO meeting. Uh, we try to have one every three to four months, um, uh, but we still have to organize the next meeting, the next event. Uh, so and we need some engagement from other companies than Lanka Research. Um, as far as I know, someone put his hand up la last meeting, uh, but to be honest, I can't remember who it was, and uh, we haven't been in touch. Uh, so that's probably me being equally bad, but maybe we can get back in touch and organize the next meeting. So the, the content of the next meeting, uh, Pierre is probably going to be presenting some stuff about uh, GIS um, with the Python programming language. You can do a lot of um, analytical things quite quickly with Python. Uh, Python is a well-known and supported language um, that is easy to learn and pick up. So that's it. I think and I hope you had you have enjoyed this talk and you learn something from it. Um, uh, you can get in touch with me uh, through Landcare Research. Uh, I work there. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you.